Hey, how's everybody doing today? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, today I'm going to be talking about how to build an eight-figure marketing engine without spending a single dollar on paid ads. Uh, definitely not ads at all, just paid ads is what uh, I'm talking about today. So my name is Oliver Brocato, and I'm the co-founder of Tabs Chocolate. Last year, we did about $9 million in revenue at a 40% net profit margin. And that's only possible because of the organic strategies that I'm gonna tell you about in this presentation. And my niche is sex chocolate, which sounds absolutely nuts <laughs> and, uh, and crazy. Um, so I think it's important for me to tell you a little bit about myself and give you some context. I'm 22 years old, and I've been in the e-commerce space since I was 14. I got my start slinging fidget spinners in high school, eventually started a little social media management business, which turned into a marketing agency, eventually got into drop shipping and private labeling. And about five years ago, I was on the founding team for this leggings brand called Light, and we were super early to TikTok. This was back in the day when you know, TikTok was just a silly, stupid dancing app for kids. And we were working with micro-influencers and creators and repurposing them for paid ads. And we scaled this brand from zero to seven figures. And then eventually, everybody and their mother started competing with us. Because to be clear, we didn't have any patents, we didn't have any IP, no ownership. We simply slapped our logo on it and we were selling them like hotcakes. And so eventually, as we got squeezed out of the market, I went back to the drawing board and I was like, listen, for whatever I do next, I wanna start a product and brand that has a couple key characteristics. First is it needed to be something that was inherently viral, something that was engineered for TikTok. It needed to be in the very fabric of the product itself because I knew this marketing channel better than anyone else. And perhaps more importantly, it needed to be a space that had high barriers to entry. It couldn't be something where you, know, you can just dupe and hit up my supplier on AliExpress and all of a sudden compete with me. And that's when I stumbled upon this product. It was called Sexts, and a random girl made a TikTok video about them and had seven million views, two million likes, and it was an aphrodisiac chocolate. And when I looked it up online, I was absolutely shocked. They had no website, no social media presence, their execution, branding, packaging, everything was terrible, and everybody was losing their minds. They were like, where can I find this? Like, what is this? How does it work? And so I saw this concept and I was like, wow, with like my you know, skill set and expertise and background, I feel like this is the perfect vehicle. And I hit the ground running. So basically, we took the most popular and effective natural supplements that typically come in a pill or powder format, and we put in a chocolate. We took something that was very taboo and stigmatized and made it into a shared luxury experience. We took supplements like maca root, Epimedium, DHEA, to name a few, and we obsessed over the product development. From the packaging itself, you know, each square uh, sat in a little divot and there were uh, emojis uh, underneath, um, to the actual chocolate itself, it broke in half, half for each partner. It really played well to the camera. And this was the final product, something that was premium, something that was unique, and once again, built for virality. So enough about me and enough about my brand, why am I telling you guys all about this? Well, the key takeaway here is that nothing else works. All the strategies that I'm gonna tell you about today, they will not work unless you have some sort of features in your product or a product that is built and primed for virality. And so it's really important that you keep that in mind. So what are the elements to building a viral product? There are a couple. First is it needs to be something that's edgy. It needs to be something that's like a scroll stopper. It can't be a commoditized good. It can't be something that you can find at your local mom and pop shop or on Amazon or you know, on Target. It needs to be something that is truly novel and unique. So some viral video, or rather some viral brand examples that come to mind, um, Cloudy Vapes. Um, this is one of my friend's brands. Um, basically it's a uh, melatonin diffuser, so it's kind of like a vape, but there's no nicotine. Um, again, he took something that everybody uses and knows, and he put a little bit of a twist on it. Um, another great example is Mini Katana. They actually sell anime uh, tiny swords. They do eight figures a year, um, all just through their own TikTok channel. And then lastly is Peachy Slime. Uh, before Tyler, my buddy, uh, started selling slime, you know, 
this space was already massive on, on short form and social media. It's very satisfying. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it was one of those kinds of spaces that was already you know, popping off. And so he built his brand to really kind of take over that world. And he's crushing it. He's going to do over $25 million this year, has never even run a paid Facebook ad, recently just launched his first uh, email and SMS campaign. Like, it's absolutely bonkers. So now that we got the product part out of the way, let's jump into the marketing. And in a similar fashion, I'm going to talk a little bit about my story, and then I'll kind of be breaking down the strategies that you can walk away from this and hopefully execute it uh, to your own brands. So when I first started Tabs, my goal was to work with as many micro-influencers as I possibly could. But I had a lot of challenges. Um, first of all, we were getting rate limited on Instagram. They were blocking the number of DMs that we could send out. Secondly, most influencers were just straight up ghosting us. Uh, they weren't responsive. And of those that did respond, they wanted to charge us an arm and a leg. And despite all the systems that I set up, the spreadsheets, the VAs, hiring different agencies, specialists, like nothing kind of seemed to work. It was just a logistical mess. And things were a roller coaster. We would have a micro-influencer video that would go up. We would do like $500 to $1,000 in sales in the early days. And then the next day, you know, uh, sales would return back to zero. And so, you know, through this experience, I kind of came to the conclusion that like, listen, if we put out enough short form, we will inevitably win. It's just a matter of systemizing it and doing it in a, in a way that's going out passively. And that's when I stumbled upon this guy named Key. He was a drop shipper. Um, I stumbled upon one of his tweets and he was selling like these high powered flashlights um, and he was promoting his product and brand all organically on TikTok. He created a brand page on TikTok and he would put one to three videos a day and I was astonished because he had like a $30,000 day in sales. And so I basically approached Key and courted him and I was like, listen, instead of you know, focusing on you know, the whole entire e-com side and he was going through PayPal holds and payment processor bands and had no idea how to build a landing page, I was like, you focus on your zone of genius, you focus on making high converting viral content and be an affiliate for me. And somehow I got him on board. And it was a massive success. Key put out over 90 videos in the first month and drove $80,000 in revenue. Videos were blowing up left and right. And that's when I had this light bulb moment. There was a whole entire community and people that were just like Key that existed on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. And so I started onboarding them in a similar fashion. And I started setting them up, each with their own independent TikTok account. And I started horizontally scaling. So why horizontally scale? Why, why go about it this way? A couple of reasons. First thing is that I noticed that TikTok starts to favor creators that follow a very specific formula and kind of video style. And so if you start to put a bunch of creators on one page, there are honestly like too many cooks in the kitchen and TikTok doesn't know who to show your videos to and so they start to stifle your views. Second, I wanted to basically segment out the creators onto different pages so I'd be able to understand what the analytics looked like, right? If I had like eight creators on one page, how would I know like who's really driving views, who's really driving sales? And especially if I'm compensating them on performance, it would become very tricky. And lastly, this system allowed me to really play to the law of averages and large numbers. Again, my main mission here is simply to put as much output as I possibly can. The other thing that I noticed was that diverse creators bring about diverse audience, or, or audiences, rather. When I onboarded young creators, the videos were intrinsically being shown to young people. And when I brought on an LGBTQ creator, it was being shown to LGBTQ audiences. And so in essence, by working with different kinds of creators and different demographics, I was able to start to target different niches and pockets, and each creator and account almost became like its own miniature ad set, if you will. And it worked. We scaled to hundreds of creators and hundreds of accounts on TikTok Organic. And once again, the underlying belief is simply with enough content being put out, you're destined to win. And so it's really about creating that content machine and flywheel. So again, enough about me. Let's talk about how you guys can do the same for your brands. So first things first is finding creators. 
You don't want to look for the pretty like UGC types that make like nice sounding videos and look good on camera. Like it might be artsy. Like what we want is you know videos that convert, videos that drive traffic and ultimately sales. And again, for me, like that niche really are like these drop shipping kits. You know, like they promote their own like brands and, and, and stores all through TikTok Organic. Like how do you convert them to sell for your store? And so, you know, really it's about like going through the social media platforms that they live and breathe on, right? Like X, LinkedIn, TikTok, Discords, um, and identifying them and reaching out to them and bringing them on board. And then, you know, when you have one, you can ask if they have any friends and, you know, one becomes three and three becomes five. I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty manual process and there's no like magical place or way to do it or, or, or shortcut. It really just requires like, you know, hitting the pavement hard. In terms of setting up their own accounts, uh, or rather setting up the TikTok accounts, I always encourage actually the creators to open up the accounts with their own personal information. You don't want you know, 50 different TikTok accounts all tied to one email or phone number. Uh, these social media platforms are really smart and eventually they'll just you know, start to get on you, they'll start to shadow ban you, suspend or take down pages, and that's no good. So in order to kind of mitigate risk, I let the creators actually, you know, set up their own account. And I always get asked, like, oh, like, what if they steal the account? Like, they won't. Um, it's really not going to happen. And worst case scenario, you could have a contract or something to protect you. In terms of paying creators, uh, you really want to make it a win-win. You want to give them a performance incentive. You're trying to limit, uh, you know, the cash that you're paying as much as you possibly can. Uh, with that being said, it's impossible to get them on a full affiliate basis. Uh, you know, because they got to eat too. Like they, you know, they, got, they also got to make money and they've got other opportunities. Um, and so you're going to need to give them like some sort of retainer. So what I found is that like a hybrid model works the best. Um, I try to limit the cash up front as much as I possibly can, but usually that ends up coming out to about $500 to $1,000 a month in cash. And then I give them 20% of all revenue that they drive. Uh, now keep in mind, that that 20% number is based off of attributed revenue. And most revenue that goes through is actually not tracked. Most revenue that comes through is not being you know, gone through by their UTM link or their promo code, uh, but rather someone sees the video and then they search your brand organically. So that 20% figure is roughly more like, I would say like four to like 10% um, in all reality. And in terms of two tools that I highly recommend, um, I would say Exolite for analytics and uh, Social Snowball for setting up the UTM link, the promo code, uh, paying out all the creators at scale. Uh, it's a really phenomenal platform. Uh, can't recommend them enough. So now we've found creators. We know what to pay them. We're setting them up with their accounts. Uh, you know, how do you onboard them? Like, what are the best practices? Um, well, first, I give them a super general brief. Uh, you know, I tell them about, like, you know, we want good lighting, uh, you know, just like very, very broad general kinds of things. Then I give them a document of viral videos that have performed well in the past. Um, uh, to me, I think like, like, that's the best thing that you can give one of these creators, more so than like, any sort of scripts or trying to micromanage or engineer things. Like, give them the winning concepts because what goes viral once will go viral again, um, especially with like, a little twist or you know, a different face behind it. And that's like, a pretty like, universal rule that's, that's served me really well. Um, and then I give them creative control and creative freedom. Um, I'm not like, you know, on their ass trying to force feed them or, or push them to say certain things. My goal is to bring on talented individuals, uh, you know, that can run with, you know, the, run with the, the, the TikTok profiles rather than me trying to micro-engineer everything. And all I ask is for one TikTok a day and consistency. Now, I've tried to, uh, you know, streamline organization through Discord and Slack, obviously for me, it makes it a lot easier as a business owner, but you gotta understand that these creators are humans, um, they're people, and they have other commitments. They're working for you on a contractual part-time level. They might have other jobs, they might have other commitments with other brands. And so, well, actually what I noticed, the best way to communicate with them is through iMessage, just like you would communicate with like, one of your friends or your colleagues or you know, somebody in your family. And so every single morning, I actually have my VA reach out to every single creator and send them like a good morning text, like hyping them up. Hey, how are you? Good morning. We're super excited for you to get the video out. Have an amazing Tuesday. Send us a link once it's live. And just like that little mechanism 
um, has increased, like I would say, engagement amongst the creators um, and retaining that. We've also tried to create like a community vibe. Um, and so, you know, once a month we'll meet and everybody will hop on like a Google Meet or a Zoom and, you know, we'll give out bonuses for like the most viewed video or the best performing video or the funniest video. Um, and, you know, we want the creators to be talking to each other. We don't want information to, go, to get siloed. Whenever somebody has a viral video, it's sent to everybody and everybody's remaking it. Uh, that's kind of the process there. In terms of the content strategy itself, um, something like that I named like the one-two hook is what we like really follow. And what that means is that the first videos, or rather every video that everybody's posting, is optimized for virality. It's you know, brand awareness, it's general, it's not super in-depth about the product itself. It's just to get as many eyeballs as you can and capture attention. Once a creator succeeds and hits a viral winner and captures the attention, that's when hook number two comes. And hook number two is when you start making follow-up videos responding to comments on the initial viral video. And when you do that, TikTok actually retargets the viewers from that initial viral video. So once again, the goal is to get a viral video, and then it's to capitalize on the viral video with responding to comment videos. And in those videos, that's when you start really pushing the product, you start pushing the sale, go to the website, you wanna create FOMO, urgency, you wanna objection handle, and really, really, you know, like really push through that conversion. But let me be clear, like all the creators from the onset are shooting for virality, then they're trying to convert that virality and that attention. In terms of some tips, tricks, things and wish that I, knew, that I wish I knew when I was starting out, a um, couple things. First is that you're going to need to work with a lot of creators. And it's a very, very manual process. Most of the people that you're gonna work with are probably gonna ghost you, are probably not going to create great content. And it's going to take time, and you're going to need to operate at a certain like, high enough scale in order to see returns. If you work with like, one creator for, let's say, you know, half a month or a month, and you don't see anything hit, you're not really giving it a fair shake. It's kind of like loading up like, Facebook ads or Amazon PPC and you know, putting like, an absurdly low budget and just like, you know, getting disappointed when you're not seeing any sort of return. So if you want to give this a real go, I would say like, starting off with like, three to five creators minimum and letting them run for three months. Now, I had to run the spray and pray model, uh, you know, working with a, a large number of creators across a large number of accounts, just spamming the For You page day in, day out. I do want to mention that there are other ways to basically you know, uh, capitalize on you know, the short form wave that we're seeing. And you know, the other alternative is to really focus highly on one channel and uh, you know, having intense focus and effort into every video being put out. Two brands that I think are crushing this are Midday Squares and Mini Katana. Unlike me, you know, they have one person full time that's spending hours strategizing, script writing, vi like videoing, like it's going into post production. Uh, and you know, that also works well. I like uh, you know, the, the spray and shoot model because for me, it's, it's more so about like mitigating my risk. I'm in the sex space, I'm in the supplement space, and so pages are constantly getting uh, taken down and shadow banned or deleted. And so you know, it's, 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 it's kind of how I go about it. But if I'm in your shoes, I would definitely evaluate both models, right? Working with a mass number of creators at scale horizontally or really focusing your efforts on one page. Midday squares, um, they basically like run like a TV show um, kind of thing where like they're talking about the behind the scenes of building their business and building their brand. Mini Katana does some really high production stuff. Like one of their videos was catching a bullet with a sword, um, absolutely nuts. Whatever model you end up using, you need to be leveraging TikTok organic and creating this sort of content flywheel. Uh, the opportunity is just too great. So hopefully by this point, you know, I've talked about you know, creating that flywheel. Um, you know, that, that's kind of like the first pillar, that's the main pillar. Now I'm gonna talk about a couple of things that you can do to leverage all the hard work and the success that you already have to give this content a new life and capitalize on it even further. So one of the other channels that I run with is meme pages. 
there are networks of theme pages on Instagram and on Twitter that are putting up billions of impressions every single month. They have networks of accounts that reach you know, hundreds of millions, uh, hundreds of millions of followers. And so what I do is I take my most viral creatives that crushed on TikTok that have been validated, I shrink them down onto kind of a white background, put a caption over it, and then I pay these Instagram meme pages and Twitter meme pages to post it. We know that the content converts and it's already been proven to be valid, like viral. We also know that these theme pages have millions of, of followers you know, and built-in distribution. Those two things in aggregate create you know, super viral content again. And you know, we don't have to spend any more time or work building the videos. We're simply just giving it a second life. In order to kind of work on this channel, you're going to need to have somebody on the inside. And the reason being is that this space is run by like 16 to like 22 year old kids um, gate kept on like telegram groups. Um, and so you're gonna want like an inside man or like an inside agency that has like the direct relationships uh, that can get you on these pages uh, for good deals. Another channel that I highly recommend is reposting, reposting your content, right? Again, with the core tenant that if it went viral on TikTok, it'll likely go viral on Instagram Reels, it'll go viral on Facebook Reels, it'll go viral on YouTube Shorts, Pinterest Idea Pins. It's important to syndicate your content, not just focusing on TikTok. I think that's where most of kind of content starts off, but then might as well spread it across all the other platforms. Initially, I had my VA open up like 10 accounts on each platform and he was manually posting things. I also tried like a software like Repurpose.io to kind of streamline it. And while we were having some success, it wasn't operating quite at the scale that I wanted it to. I didn't want to put, you know, 10 reposts a day up. I wanted to put 10,000. That's what would move the needle. And so what I did is I created a Discord. Um, basically, I created a group, like an ecosystem, where there were kids that wanted to make money online that would join, and we would train them. We'd give them instructions on how to set up a social media account under you know, a Tabs username, so call it Tabs Chocolate One, or The Famous Chocolates, or, Ta or The Viral Chocolates. And so they, we would coach them on opening up an Instagram page. We would give them you know, the photos and captions to upload to their feed. And then we would give them our viral creative library, and we would just have them post like one short form every single day. And it was crazy because videos just started popping up left and right. And to date, we have now have a Discord of over 7,000 members. Uh, we've paid out over $172,000 know, to like these uh, teenagers and, and young 20-year-old kids who are just simply posting a, viral, like a video here and there, day in, day out. And uh, we've had a lot of viral winners, videos that have gotten 11 million views, 9 million views, 7 million views. In order to really kind of create that ecosystem, um, you know, we give them a percentage of all revenue that they drive based off of, again, a trackable UTM link and a promo code. We use Social Snowball for that. And then we also gamified it. So every single day, if they post, they react to a message. We take all those people that reacted, we put them on a, a wheel, we spin the wheel, and we give out money to like five random people. Uh, if they post for 30 days straight, they unlock a salary. Like we even have like a channel on the Discord, which is like a gym channel where like people are like sharing like their uh, like mirror selfies of like their progress in the gym. Like we've really created like a, a community bot. And I think that's why it's been able to work so well. Lastly, you know, you have a content flywheel at this point at your disposal. Might as well leverage it for other, uh, you know, other, other ways, like for your website for your emails, from your SMS. You should never pay a UGC creator again for, to run any of your ads because you have so much content being put out day in, day out that you can now start to clip and you know, put into like compilations or you can take certain parts. And, and so I think like that's also a, a benefit to this system is that you're not gonna need to rely on anybody uh, to source content for your paid ads. So for Amazon specifically, I see a really big opportunity here. And the reason being is that a lot of people in my space, in the e-com world, on Shopify, are starting to leverage these strategies you know, to kind of blow up their brands. However, every single month, they need to hit a certain view count and hit certain metrics in order to, to continue the sales and to keep them going. Whereas on Amazon, you can leverage these strategies, blow up products, come up on like the, the first or the second page and get prime real estate, and now you have evergreen sales and, and you're banking on, on the Amazon like kind of algorithm. 
And I actually have a buddy, uh, his name's Robert Oliver, who's doing this exactly, and he's absolutely crushing it. Uh, so I think that like, these strategies will permeate like, your world like, soon enough, and you're gonna see more and more people um, start to run this. So once again, um, you know, I think that like, hopefully you got something out of this, uh, you know, whether that's building for virality, leveraging short form, whether it's a spray and shoot or in-house kind of methodology, reposting that content to give it a second life, leveraging meme pages uh, you know, to extend the reach, and then ultimately creating that flywheel. So thank you so much for your time, and I'll now be answering any questions. You mentioned a lot about commenting and follow-up, so are you paying VAs to do, to specifically like TikTok video, um, in order to sort of engage right with the audience and and you mentioned like hook one hook two Could you add a little more detail yeah for sure so uh we definitely want to be like responding to comments within the comment section when i said like responding to comments what i mean is actually like responding to the comment with a new video so TikTok has a feature where you can basically like hold down a comment on one of your videos and then you can make a new video and that comment is kind of like floating around in the new TikTok that you make. And so you make a responding video to that comment. I didn't necessarily mean like a comment responding to a comment. Does that make sense? Cool. So great presentation, awesome strategy. Uh, I think everybody agrees that. Um, that seems obviously like you said, a lot of work, very manual. Um, can you describe kind of like what your team looked like uh, kind of like the, the peak of like, I mean, when you're starting, I'm assuming doing a lot of this yourself, grind a couple of VAs, figuring shit out, but then as you built you know, SOPs and all that, then, then kind of like, what did that look like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for me, like I got, I guess, kind of lucky because I was like building in public while I was building my brand Taps. And so I was like talking about um, organic creators and influencers, and I started to kind of like build a little following on Twitter. And so the way that I actually found like most of these creators was simply like by putting out tweets. I was like, hey, like we're hiring. Uh, and there was like this really like, a, like huge organic wave of like content creators that uh, were living on Twitter. And so that's kind of like initially how we did a lot of the recruitment. I would literally put like a, a link to a Google form, um, I'd ask some questions put the information down, and then we'd reach out and basically onboard anybody and everybody to come make content for us. Um, in terms of kind of like what the team looks like, um, I have an incredible operations guy um, who handles all of like the day-to-day -day management type of things. I have VAs that are, that are checking in. I don't have anybody full-time. Everything else is run by agencies, specialists, contractors. Um, so for example, for Instagram memes, um, I work with these two guys. Uh, Phil and David Kozak, they both run their own Instagram pages. One has like 4 million followers, another one has like 3 million followers, and like they live and breathe the Instagram theme page world. Like all of their boys like, are, like run theme pages, they grew up on, like sleeping on each other's couches, and so they're the ones that's like handling all of my media buying. Uh, for like my email marketing, like I have an agency. Uh, for conversion rate optimization, I have an agency. For Google Ads, it's an agency. Like, it's a very kind of lean team, uh, and it's all filled by contractors, freelancers, and, and agencies. Yeah. That's, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, this was, uh, this was great. Really appreciate uh, this content. Um, one question on the Discord that you've set up. Did you, so did you set up the Discord in order to bring people in to post content that's already viral or to actually create new viral content based on you know, the themes that are working? Yeah, good question. Um, so to answer that, it, I would say it was to post already validated viral content. Listen, my goal would be for them to create their own content. But unfortunately, that was like too big of an ask. Um, they just like were not able to be consistent with it. It takes a lot of work. You have to film, you have to script, you have to post. Like, there are a lot of moving parts to it. And like, I would love to have 6,000 people that are creating organic content on my behalf, but it was just asking too much. And what I actually noticed was the reposts of the viral videos were going more viral than some of these people that were attempting to make their own content that was pretty shitty for the most part. So, you know, it just made sense to basically transition from like, uh, you know, 6,000 kids making mediocre content 
to 6,000 kids that are simply pressing a few buttons and pushing out validated viral content on other social media outlets that you know, are also now going viral too. Hey, I have a question about um, scripting videos. So when you first started th with this strategy, um, I would imagine you don't have a lot of viral uh, videos to uh, give us an example for following uh, creators, whatever. So at first, how did you instruct these creators to create videos for, for your new product? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I mean, I think like one thing that you can do is look at A, competitors, and then B, like tangential spaces. Because again, like I really full heartedly believe in like the principle that you know things that are going viral will go viral again. And so you can take like concepts that worked for other products or for other brands and apply it to your own. Um, so I'd say that's number one. Number two is simply like hiring like really good people that understand how to create content. For me, like you know the, the guy Key that, that I mentioned in, in in the presentation, the PowerPoint, like I was not like food speeding him or forcing him to read like certain scripts or, or say certain things. Like he was on his own. He was trying a whole bunch of different things, a whole different bunch of like different concepts. And I mean, sure, we were meeting every week and, and uh, you know, in the early days. But I think it's really just about like bringing on good talent and, and letting them run, especially if you have an, like an intrinsically viral product like mine. So you mentioned having uh, the creators create their own branded accounts. Uh, and they, they, they control it entirely. But do they ever uh, post in their own accounts, like the personal accounts, so it's not always the brand, obviously the brand repeatedly uh, posting again, right, over and over? Do, do you have, so do the, the people often use their own accounts if, they're, if they, have, they have like great engagement already, if you find, if you find, like, find like a, a larger creator or something like that? Right, so a lot of the creators that we work with they're not influencers. They don't really have like personal accounts like with a lot of followers. Um, so like that's number one. Um, number two, I would say that like TikTok is very unlike other social media platforms where oftentimes like the number of followers you have doesn't really impact the reach or views that you get. Meaning that it's really about the quality of the video and the quality of the content itself. And that's why like this model works so well. Uh, to put into perspective, like. Charlie D'Amelio has like a secondary account. And the name of the account is user like 957064, like blah, 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 it like, doesn't matter. The profile picture of the account is, is not. It's like the anonymous like ghost uh, kind of image that's like the default. And meanwhile, she posts a video on it, it's kind of like her Finsta TikTok, and it gets crazy views and crazy engagement. So I think that's just like a, that goes to show um, kind of like my thesis where it's like, you don't have to get too crazy about like, it being posted from a big account or having like the perfect name or the perfect like profile picture or the perfect bio, good content will get rewarded. And that's also why we're able uh, you know, to get such good rates on the content itself because we're not paying people that an arm and a leg that have you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of followers for their brand name. Instead, we're paying people that I believe are like an underappreciated asset, people that just know how to make good content. So we're not paying for their name brand, we're just paying for their skill. And that was like kind of like the strategy that I pioneered. And is one of the uh, guidelines to like always mention the brand or to have a CTA for search for this brand uh, somewhere? Sorry, can you repeat that? Do you, in your guidelines, do you always, do you always have um, like a rule to always mention the brand or to, to, to point people to, to like a website or something somewhere? So definitely not pointing to the website. Um, in terms of like the, the video itself, like you, you obviously want to highlight the product in some way. With that being said, the product does not need to be like, I guess like the entire um, headline of, of the video. It, it needs to make an appearance, it needs to be a part of it, but it doesn't need to be like super product centric. Again, like video one, like the first optimization should be virality. Then once you've achieved that, that's when you want to start pushing to the website, making more product centric kind of videos, and that's what I was talking about of, of the responding to comments with new videos. You said you are not using paid uh, advertising. Have you tried boosting uh, uh, like a viral video again? And is there any, like instead of reposting, just uh, using ads to boost as a test? Yeah, yeah. So, so we do run a little bit of Google paid ads. So white lie. Um, but in terms of paid, what I, what I mean is like meta, TikTok, 
um, you know, the, the, the two biggest uh, paid marketing channels. And the reason why is because A, we're in the sex space, B, we're in the supplement space, and so we have a really hard time getting things to run. Um, so, you know, I've tried everything. I've tried that like, cloaking, I've tried that like, gray hat stuff, I've tried like running with, you know, uh, Facebook uh, ad agency accounts, uh, Shields, like all, all of it, and it's uh, been, been unsuccessful, yeah. I mean like Spark ads to the same video. Right, sp sp yeah, Spark ads is like part of TikTok ads. So like b the product, yeah, it's a, it's a regulated space. Quick question. So you're mentioning that you had a lot of issues or TikTok shop, you know, kind of restricts the category that you're in. If you were doing a product that had none of these restrictions, how would you imagine leveraging um, TikTok shops affiliate program that they have? They make it so easy for people to get their commissions and get the product so easily. Would you shift your strategy at all or would it just make it easier what you're already doing? Yeah, absolutely. Um... I mean, it would, be, it would be a similar strategy. We would just be bolting on TikTok shop instead of pushing people uh, you know, to go to the website. Um, we'd be pushing them to, to purchase with a click of a button on the video. It's pretty nuts what's going on right now with TikTok shop. TikTok is like, putting a huge emphasis and pushing out videos that are using the shop functionality to the point where normal creators and influencers that just post regular content are seeing a decline in their views because of how much TikTok is prioritizing their e-commerce uh, you know, functionality. Um, and I've actually even seen uh, some smart creators and influencers uh, use TikTok shop and, and put like a 99 cent product or a one cent product just to get more views and play towards the algorithm. That's how much they're pushing it. Uh, so I think that there's a huge opportunity to be leveraging TikTok shop. If I didn't have any sort of regulations, every single, you know, I guess like subsidiary brand that I'm horizontally scaling with would be pushed in that way without a doubt. My question is, so Key was an early hire. It seemed like, you know, you showed the screenshot of like $500 revenue in a day yeah. and then the next screenshot, which was a huge impact on your revenue. So Key knew what he was doing. But my question is like, what, um, what was Key doing? Did he have someone that was creating content? I under he seemed like a drop shipper, if I'm remembering. Yeah. Okay, right. so were you providing him content? Did he have someone creating, like, let's say videos of the product? I'm just kind of curious what he was creating. I understand he was trying different things and probably making different kinds of videos with text and, you know, AI or like the, the popular voice uh, audio things right. or whatever, but just kind of curious what creative tools he had. Right, so when I said like he was a drop shipper, uh, like he was, but I think like more importantly, like he was a creator. The way that he would promote his dropship store, like the shitty flashlights that he was selling from AliExpress, was by creating a TikTok page and just putting out amazing content at scale. Be posting, you know, one to five videos day in, day out. So we just basically shifted it where instead of making videos about the shitty flashlights, we started making videos about my product and brand. And I was actually executing well on the e-com side. So, you know, every visitor, we were really squeezing out you know, as much value as we could. Um, in terms of, I guess, like what the videos that, that Key was making, um, the, the, the format that popped off for him, for him was like finding tabs in, like fill in the blank. So it'd be like finding tabs in my Airbnb and he would like show the product and him taking it and being like, oh, like, well, this is going to be fun or, you know, and, and so like that format was like something that we milked. That like once, once, once Key started running that and we started bringing on other creators, eventually like, we had other creators that were like finding tabs in my sister's boyfriend's room, finding tabs like in the school parking lot, like finding tabs. Like that was uh, that was an angle that that was really just crushing and going viral, and, and something that we took advantage to of, um, and then eventually started having to find new angles because it just wasn't hitting the same. But the innovation was mainly coming from the creators. I can't sit here and take credit for that. You know, for me, I was a business owner. I'm a business owner. I'm, you know, building out the systems and the framework to bring on more creators and scale that, I'm not actually doing like the day-to-day -day thinking of like, oh, like let's come up with this exact hook and this exact video format. That's what their job is. Sure, and I guess, so what I hear and what's kind of interesting is it's like you started from almost like the in-house because like this was a guy you worked very closely with. So yeah. it's almost like you can make this work by finding one talented person that's going to really put all their time and energy in instead of because, you know, a lot of people starting the discord, finding 6,000 people. That's a that's a big, yeah. uh, a big task. So yeah. anyway, thank you. Thank you so much, Oliver. 
Thank you. Amazing. Appreciate it, man. Standing ovation for this guy. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.